False Flag Conspiracy Theories and the Origins of the Flat Earther's Psychological State The Final Nail in the Coffin of the Flat Earth Debate Welcome back to Beyond Psychology. As you may have come to expect, I offer the world outside the box psychological theory. I cover the psychology that mainstream psychologists don't want to touch with a 10-foot pole and a conspiracy theorist pushing. That being said, welcome to a video that I should have never had to make. Today I'm going to propose a theory as well as some of the observations that helped me to arrive at this conclusion, of which supports how the Flat Earth Conspiracy Theory has become so popular and what type of person becomes a Flat Earther. Before I get to that specifically, I want to briefly outline a possibility that apparently the majority are not even considering, which is false flag conspiracy theories. I think it's very likely that conspiracy theorists have uncovered some deplorable actions of corporations and other rich elites as well as governments. As if there's any difference between those. Anyway, sometimes a conspiracy theorist is extremely far off base and riddled with logical fallacies that is braided with cognitive bias and they do deserve to be ridiculed. But other times, they come up with a theory that actually has value and may even be the truth. Keep in mind that theories are typically based on evidence, and if there wasn't evidence to suggest the thought, then there would be no theory. So anybody who questions a conspiracy theory should be asked what they think the evidence means. I think it's likely that some conspiracy theories are so close to being the truth, and if they become popular enough, those theories become a threat to some rich and powerful people. It becomes a priority of those rich and powerful people, and or corporations, governments, to discredit the ignorantly labeled tinfoil hat nut jobs. Speaking of this insult of tinfoil hat nut job, I just want to point out that that is an ad hominem attack. Also, after a while, it got used so much that it became ineffective. People became desensitized to that particular attack. This is when a new approach was needed, because we all know the truth is contagious. So at this point, what I think they've done is flooded the market with erroneous and, dare I say, completely insane but cleverly manufactured false flag conspiracy manipulations. Flood the market with enough insane bullshit and people just don't know what to think anymore. See. The reason for this is because if a conspiracy theorist starts talking about one of these false flag conspiracies, then the more intelligent of us looks at them like a crazy person, and then even if they tell us about some conspiracy that is actually a valid conspiracy, we won't listen because we already know that they're a complete moron or a crazy person because they believe in lizard people and flat earth, for example. And this is a perfect segue to jump right into the psychology of the Flat Earther. So if you're a Flat Earth conspiracy theorist, right now might be a good time to put your tinfoil hat away just for the rest of this video. Try to leave your bias in the same drawer that you store your tinfoil hat with. And I suppose if it's your psychological security blanket, then you can keep wearing it, Linus. It's okay. And remember that I'm not on anybody's side here. Well, I'm on the side of evidence-based reasoning, as we all should be. So let's start out with innate ego and our need for social acceptance of our peers, something I refer to as social survival. In relation to ego and our sports-driven mentality brainwashing that so prevalently perpetuates our need to win or be right, the individualist hates to be made to look like a fool. Being considered foolish in the eyes of our peers is a danger to our social survival, and subconsciously we do everything we can to prevent that from occurring. So at first, people placate society society and take the safe route by siding with all of the presumably sane majority. And with that bandwagon logical fallacy, they call all the conspiracy theorists tinfoil hat nut jobs. And with one foul swoop of hasty judgment logical fallacy, they survive socially with the majority. But after a while, the truth rears its ugly head, because at some point they are going to be exposed to information that makes them realize that some conspiracies are actually likely the facts perhaps even the norm. At that point, wow, do they feel stupid. They say to themselves, never again will I be fooled and allow my ego to take such a hit. They then attempt to make the most effective tinfoil hat possible and join the truthers movement. Once they've reached this stage of psychological development, all that's left is for them to stumble upon the lizard people and flat earth conspiracy theories. As most people are largely scientifically illiterate and still suffering from hasty judgment logical fallacy, now braided with cognitive bias at this point, because they are afraid of being fooled again, they are easily caught up in this wave of bullshit tabloid psyops gobbledygook. 
You gotta hand it to those tier 5 elitists. The Flat Earth Conspiracy is very clever with its sophistry. I'm just gonna interject here with something, a side note of relevance. If you like conspiracy, then check out Edward Bernays, the father of propaganda. He taught the elites that they can manipulate people into believing just about anything. What, you think the elites wouldn't use that helpful tool to discredit the words of dissenters on a mass scale? Come on. The truth is out there, my good molders and scullies. Alright, continuing on. So in people's fearful haste to not be made the fool again, they become enthralled about these seemingly reliable and convincing theories about lizard people and flat earth. Then they mention it to some people and perhaps share the video on social media. Inevitably, someone who is generally scientifically literate observes the flat earth theory and immediately calls the person who shared it a total fucking moron. The person who shared the Flat Earth Conspiracy Theory takes a hit to their ego, which they promised themselves they would never allow happen again, and they become extremely embarrassed as well as feeling attacked. They react irrationally and lash out. They are now falling victim to their anger, and they latch onto the Flat Earth Conspiracy Theory like a dog with a bone, because they'll be damned if they are ever made to be the fool again. At this point, they were already desperate for social survival, they made all these changes and joined the truther movement to avoid failing in regards to social survival. But yet again, the change they have made is making it hard to survive. Now they are in a terrified and angry state braided with cognitive dissonance. It's not their fault either. Our society doesn't teach people how to think. And because most are not scientifically literate, because it takes forever to reach that point, there's no way for them to tell what the truth is anymore. So they just have to pick something, kind of like choosing a religious belief. We see how rational that choice is, hmm? And voila! The divide and conquer strategy of the elites has worked perfectly, because now we have different groups of people who can't unify or even get along at all because they are so different in regards to their mental state. We have the snobby, scientifically literate intellectuals who think they are completely sane because they don't believe in the tinfoil hat nut job bullshit. And then, therefore, they can inflate their ego, thinking they're better than everyone else. As opposed to being part of the other group, which is the truther movement, chock full of presumably scientifically illiterate crazy morons. And by the way, I must point out that not all the people who think some conspiracy theories have value believe in lizard people and flat earth. You never go full tinfoil hat. Now here's another possibility to consider, if you don't want to swallow the whole psyops conspiracy theories. The Flat Earth Conspiracy could have just been a very clever attempt of trolling the hordes of gullible and scientifically illiterate masses. Then it snowballed, and now the guy can't recant his fake conspiracy theory because there will be so many irrational, angry believers that those believers will pick up torches and pitchforks. They'll come after him. He's terrified. Now he has to treat it twice as serious just for his own safety. If that's the case, man, I bet he regrets being a troll. What did you win, buddy? Fucking moron. Either way, the people are going to have to learn to escape their ego and their hurt pride. That is, if they actually do indeed value the truth like they say. A Stephen Hawking quote that I enjoy goes something like this. The ability to change is evidence of intelligence. So if you admit that you were gullible and fooled, it actually just shows that you're an adult and intelligent. Additionally, whether it is psyops or a clever trolling, you should be thanking them for showing you how gullible you are. Because if they had never pointed it out, then you wouldn't be able to take that first step of admitting you have a problem in order to start fixing said problem. So in a fucked up way, their intention to be an asshole is actually helping you. Now for the last nail in the coffin of the Flat Earth Conspiracy. That's right, I'm going to end your debates once and for all. But I'm not going to use evidence, because clearly evidence doesn't work. So I'm just going to use completely infallible logic. Not to disprove the theory, but just to make it so unreasonable that you can no longer subscribe to any of the debates in good conscience. Okay, so hold on to your tinfoil hat. Be prepared to feel a little ridiculous, and then move on and grow up. It will all be okay. Here's my observation of the Flat Earth debates going on all over the internet. The Flat Earth conspiracy theorist says, Look at all of the evidence that supports the theory. How could you believe in Round Earth after looking at all this information? The Round Earther says, That's not evidence at all. The evidence is completely doctored, and the stuff that's not doctored is not evidence for what you think it is. Look at all of my proven scientific evidence that completely disproves this insanity. You're a nutjob as well as completely ignorant. Deal with it, dumb shit. 
Then the flat earther retaliates by attempting to insert that all of the counter evidence proposed by the scientifically literate round earther is actually just more conspiracy layered on top of more conspiracies. All science is a conspiracy, and we don't have satellite technology. NASA's all a big conspiracy lie. This is all bullshit. What it actually is, is the act of someone who's totally desperate using lies on top of lies in order to increase the value of yet again another lie. It's one of the most ridiculous and irrational things I've ever seen in my entire life, aside from religion. If people just bothered to watch a ton of documentaries about the history of science, they would understand just how ridiculous they are being. So here's my impression of the whole debate, and then my infallible logic removing all of your debates. I know. You say, yeah right, fat chance. Well, in the spirit of Penn & Teller's bullshit, again, I told you to be prepared and to hold on to your tinfoil hats. You're going to feel ridiculous, but that's all part of the growing process. Growing pains, if you will. So here goes. Basically, one party says, your evidence is trash, and therefore you're wrong. And then the other party says, no, your evidence is trash, and therefore you're wrong. Well, technically, both parties are just pretending that they've won something with this debate. And in reality, no progress was made, so it's more of a stalemate. The bottom line is, seeing as that neither of you owns a spaceship, and you can't offer either of you a ride in your spaceship to go around the planet or fly over the Earth, then technically you just have to admit you don't know. At least, not 100%. So here's how this debate translates. One party says, I don't really know. And the other party says, I don't really know either. Rather than both of them agreeing that because they don't have a spaceship to prove it to either of the parties involved, Instead, they agree to argue like immature, irrational children over whose information is worse. Trust me when I tell you that your energy will be better spent actually building that spaceship. I'm beginning to think that it's your want to debate like it's a game and your addiction to Jerry Springer chair-throwing drama that's really what's important to you people, rather than anything that remotely resembles truth and logic. Now obviously I'm 99.9999% positive that the Earth is round because I am not scientifically illiterate. Over 17 years of learning science almost every day in some capacity prevents me from falling for such tripe. But what I have to say to both parties is get to making that spaceship or shut the fuck up. He shoots, he scores, and still feels like he didn't win a motherfucking thing. I'm sorry. Was this not kissing your ass enough? Is that what content producers are supposed to do? Did I tell you something that you didn't want to hear? Well, if you wanted an ass kissing, and you wanted a content producer to cater the message specifically to you in order to hold your hand like a child, you're in the wrong place. Welcome to the Thought Revolution. Thank you for watching and listening. Please share this with every Flat Earther and dissenter of the Flat Earth Conspiracy, as well as any other applicable communities. Have a good one, fellow brain cells of the universe, or whatever the fuck we are.